Okay, in this video we'll look at the derivative of the natural exponential function or the derivative of e to the x. Now before we uh, get into this video, I would suggest if you haven't done it, go ahead and back up and watch the video that's entitled The Derivative of the Natural Log. Uh, some of the ideas in that video will carry on over to this one. Okay, the uh, derivative of e to the x is a bit unique in that if you look at this part up here on the left hand side, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So it's the only function that is its own derivatives. Now let's take a look at why that is. Uh, it's easier to see, I think, if you graph it. So if we looked at the graph of it, uh, the graph of e to the x is just an exponential graph, and it would look something like this right here. So let's assume that this is the derivative of e to the x. Now, if you were to sketch the derivative graph, the way you do it with any function is just go to the original function, pick a point on the graph, draw the tangent line, find the slope of the tangent line, and then plot that, that value. So let's just pick a few and let's see what this looks like. If I pick this point right here and drew a tangent line, if I were to find the slope of that tangent line and plot it, it will actually turn out to be exactly the same thing as the value of the EVX graph itself. So that point will wind up right here. If I were to come over here and pick this point, draw the tangent line, find the slope of the tangent line, the slope of that tangent line will lie right on the e-axis there. If I were to pick a point right here, uh, again draw the tangent line, the slope of that tangent line, the value of the slope of that tangent line, is exactly the same thing as the value of the point on e to the x. Go up here and just keep repeating the process. Draw a tangent line here. The slope of this tangent line here uh, is exactly the value of e to the x at that point. So when you get finished, if you were to draw the graph of the tangent line, the graph of the tangent line will lie right exactly on top of the graph of e to the x. So this will be the graph of e to the x. So again, uh, it's the only function that its derivative is the same thing as the original function. And when you look at the graph, you can see why. Now, if you look at the one on the left over here, this is what it would be if it's just a simple x. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now, if the exponent is something more complicated than just a simple x, you can think of it as a chain rule, and the rule changes to this. It's the derivative of the original e function times the derivative of the exponent. So you can think of it as, as using a chain rule. Now, I like to write these things kind of in English as I do them, so rather than trying to remember this formula, if you think of it like this, it really makes it a little bit easier. <clears throat> Just think of it, this part right here uh, is the original e function. So it's the original e function, then times, <clears throat> and what this part is, it's nothing more than the derivative of the exponent. So the derivative of the exponent of the exponent. So the original e function times the derivative of the exponent. <clears throat> and if you just say it like that as you write it, it makes the whole thing a little bit easier. So with that in mind, let's take a look at a couple of examples. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at this first one. Now this is just a simple x right here, so all the derivative is going to be y prime. If I go to here, y prime would be, I've got the constant 3. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and I'm finished. That's all there is to it. Now in this next one, uh, it's something more than just a simple x. I've got x squared plus 4x, so I'm going to have to use the two-part definition on this one. So what this would be, and again, I'll just kind of say it in English as I do it. y prime would be equal to, first of all, you've got the constant 3. Now use the two-part definition. It's the original e function times the derivative of its exponent. So this would be, the original function is e to the x squared plus 4x, then times the derivative of the exponent. Now just take the derivative of this part up here pretends it's a brand new function. The derivative of x squared plus 4x would be 2x plus 4, and you are done. So again, you've got the constant 3, then write the original e function, then times the derivative of the exponent, and you've got it. 
So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, let's take a look at this next one. Now what this is, sometimes you have to rewrite them first. And my suggestion, before you try to find the derivative of this thing, go ahead and rewrite it. Now this is, think of it as x to the positive 1 in the bottom. So I'm going to move it to the top and make it be x to the negative 1. So this is like having negative 3x to the negative 1. If you write it like that, it'll keep you away from the quotient rule. So with that in mind, let's find the derivative. So the derivative, y prime, would be equal to, now first of all, it's the original function, and you can either write it like this or like this. I think I'll write it the second way. So it's going to be e to the negative 3, x to the negative 1, now times the derivative of the exponent, and the derivative of that, if you bring the negative 1 down, it'll turn into a positive 3, x, and then take away 1 to the negative 2. So it'll look like that. Now, it's possible, if you were checking answers, they may rewrite this thing, and you can move the 3 out in front. So suppose we do this. Move the 3 out in front. Then here is e. You've got the negative 3. Take the x to the negative 1. Move it back down to the denominator. Then take this x to the negative 2 and move it below the entire thing. It'll turn into x to the positive 2. But for what we're going to do, uh, this right here will be just fine. So it's just the original e function times the derivative of its exponent. Okay, let's look at the next example. All right, now <clears throat> sometimes you have to use the other things that we've talked about, the chain rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, and so on. Now what you've got here is a function inside a function. The outer function would be this. I've got something cubed, so I'm going to have to use the chain rule. So when I find the derivative of this, I would have y prime would be equal. Now remember, first of all, take the derivative of the outer part. So 3 times this thing squared, there's the derivative of the outer part. Then rewrite the inner part which would be e to the negative 2x squared. Now treat this as a brand new problem. So what I'm going to do is, at that point, now it's times the derivative of what's on the inside. So the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function. So again, treat this as a brand new problem using this new rule. So it would be the original e function times the derivative of its exponent, which would be minus 4x, and u would be done. So, uh, again, the first part's a chain rule. So this, is, this part right in here is the derivative of the outer part, and then this part over here is the derivative of the inner part. So the derivative of the outer part times the derivative of the inner part, but that requires this new rule. Okay, a couple more examples. Okay, let's try. Here's one that involves the product rule. So what you've got here is a first thing. There's a first thing, and you've got a second thing. So a first function times a second function. So when you do this one, it's going to be the product rule, which will be the first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. So this one will look like this. y prime would be equal to, it's the original first, so e to the minus 3x squared. There's the first times the derivative of the second, but this is also going to involve the chain rule. So the derivative of the sine is the cosine, but remember you have to rewrite the original inner part, which is 2x cubed, but then times the derivative of what's on the inside, which would be 6x squared, and then put brackets around that. So what that is, that is the first times the derivative of the second, and then you're going to have plus the original second, so the sine of 2x cubed, times the derivative of the first, but this time you're going to have to use this new rule. So the rule says it's the original e function times the derivative of its exponent, which would be uh, minus 3x squared. So the derivative of this would be minus 6x. So take the derivative of the exponent, and you've got it. 
So what that's going to be is the first times the derivative of the second, and then plus the original second times the derivative of the first. Okay, let's take a look at a couple more here. Um, now on this last one, just a reminder, uh, when you're using these E rules, if you use the log rules first, um, you can save yourself a lot of work. And again, if you need to, back up and review the video entitled The Derivative of the Natural Log, and it'll remind you to uh, use the log rules to spread the problem out first before you find the derivative. So what I'm going to do here is this. Remember, using the power rule, if you have the log of something raised to a power, you can bring that power out in front. So I can take this part right here, and I'll use the log rules to bring it out in front. Now, I have not found the derivative at this point. What I would have would be y is equal to, this is going to become x cubed times the natural log of e. And all I did is just bring the exponent down in front. Now notice that's not y prime, that's just y. But now, the reason you'd want to do this, it makes the problem a little bit easier. The natural log of e is 1. So this thing right here will turn into a 1. And what that leaves you is y is equal to, we'll put it over here, y is equal to just x cubed. So what happens is that you change the problem from uh, a problem involving natural log and e into just a simple power rule problem. So the derivative of this thing, y prime, would be equal to 3x squared, and you're done. So again, on a lot of problems, if you take advantage of the log rules first, it will make the final derivative easier. And we'll do this, exactly the same thing on this next problem. What I'm going to do here, before I take the derivative, remember the log of something divided by something can be split up into the individual log of the top minus the bottom. So this will change into the individual log, the natural log of e to the 2x minus the natural log of 3x cubed minus 1. So take advantage of your log rules to change it from the log of division changes into the individual logs of subtraction. Now the next step, I'll do exactly what I did up here. I've got a power, so since this is just e to the 2x, I can take this 2x and bring it down in front. Now again, at this point, I have not taken the derivative yet. This is still just y. All I'm doing is just rewriting things. So this becomes 2x times natural log of e. Now, on this one, this would be the natural log. This one, you can't bring the power down because it's part of an expression. So it's only if it's a unique power can you bring it down. So we'll leave this one as 3x cubed minus 1. Okay, now, what this was, this entire part right here, I just rewrote it. So all I'm doing in this, these parts right here are rewriting it. So I rewrite the function haven't found the derivative yet. Now I'm finally going to find the derivative. Well, actually, I can do one more thing. Let's take care of this. Just like up here, the natural log of e goes to 1. The natural log of e, this will also turn into a 1 here. So now we'll find the derivative. So when you finally find the derivative, you would have, uh, all this is is the derivative of 2x, which is 2. Then you've got minus, now the derivative of this. Remember, the derivative of the natural log, it's 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. So this would be 1 over the argument. Times the derivative of the argument. So now take the derivative of that, which would be 9x squared, and you'd be done. Now you can simplify this if you wanted to, but we'll just go ahead and leave it like this. So this derivative is going to look like this right here. So again, use the natural law rules to spread it out first. Then if you can, bring the exponents down in front, which simplifies the whole problem. Then whatever you've got left, take the derivative of that. So there's a couple of uh, the derivative of the natural exponential functions.